Example number six. For the following four machine parts, find W, the number of pounds per part, and C, the cost of the metal per part, and T, the total cost. So this tells us at the end we're going to need to add to find our total cost. This per part tells us we're going to need to multiply. And the same thing here, we're going to need to multiply. Because I know how many inches I need and how much each inch weighs. So that's going to give me my, my total weight, but I need to get that by multiplying. So I'm going to use the calculator this time. For part A, I have 39.5 times 0.39. So that's 15 Zero 0.405 pounds for part A. Then part B, 116.3 times 0.23 is 26.749. And then 106 times 0.07 is 7.42. And 6.5 times 0.34 is 2.21. So now I want to do one of these manually just to show you where we got our answer. So let's do 6.5 times 0 0.34. So I'm going to add a 0 here to keep everything lined up, which is what I do when I have decimals. So I'm going to multiply. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 5 is 20. That's a 0. Carry a 2. 6 times 4 is 24 plus 2, 25, 26. So that's 2600. Zero, zero. I'll add a 0. That's going to keep me lined up. Each time I move a place to the left, closer to the decimal, I have to add a 0. Because I'm not multiplying by 0.03, I'm multiplying by 0 0.30. So 0 0.3 times 0 is 0. 0 0.3 times 5 is 15. So that's 5 carry a 1. And 6 times 3 is 18. And 1 is 19. So I add up 0, 0, 1, carry my 1. 2, carry my 1, 2, 2, 1, 0, 0. Now I count the total number of decimal places. Behind these decimals is 4. So I start from the right and I count back to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's where my decimal point goes. So my answer is 2.21, just like we got when we did it on the calculator. Okay, now we'll do the cost per part. I'm going to need to multiply the cost per pound times the number of pounds. Again, I'll use the calculator. So for part A, 0.96 times 15.405. Now, before I do anything else, I need to look at my instructions for rounding because down here they say round the final answer to, do, to two decimal places. Round all intermediate values to two decimal places. So some of these have more than two decimal places. So I need to go back and I need to change this first one. 15.405 is going to round to 15.41. So I'm going to make this a 0.41. Then I have... 26.749, that's going to be 26.75, so I'm going to make the second one 26.75, so that I have followed all the instructions for rounding. And now, to find the cost for the part, we've got to multiply the cost per pound times the number of pounds. So we have 0 0.96 times 15.41, and 
And that gives us a cost of 147936. The decimal point is between the 4 and the 7. And then I look for rounding to two places, and it's 14.79. Okay. Then I have 0.89 times 26.75. That's 23.8075. That rounds to 23.81. Then I have $1.09 times 7.42 pounds. That's 8.0878. That comes out to 8.09. And then I have 2.16 times 2.21. That comes out to 4.7736 or 4.77. Now the total, 14.79 plus 23.18 plus 8.09 plus 4.77 is $51.46. So that's our total cost for these parts that we need to purchase. Example 7. A truck can carry a load of 7,000 pounds. Assuming that it could be cut to fit, how many feet of steel beam weighing 32.5 pounds per foot can the truck carry. So it can carry a total of 7,000 and we have that the beam weighs 32.5 pounds per feet. And look, we're looking for the number of feet. Okay, well we have the total this time, so we're going to have to divide. 7,000 divided by 32.5 is going to give us 7,000 divided by 32.5 is 215.3846 to four decimal places. And this says nearest hundredth, so that's two decimal places. So it's 215.38 feet of steel beam. Example number eight. How many sheets of metal are in a stack six inches high if each sheet is only 0.0145 inches thick. So if you have trouble deciding, am I supposed to multiply or divide? You can think about this by drawing a picture and think in whole numbers instead of decimals. So for example, let's say I have a stack. And so stacked in there are some sheets. Pretend they're all the same thickness. And let's say that this stack is 10 inches high. And each one of these is two inches thick. So how many sheets do I have? Well, clearly I have five, right? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten inches divided by two inches per sheet is going to give me five sheets. So we just do the same thing. We take the total of the stack, six, we divide it by the width, 0 0.0145. And these are much thinner, so there are going to be a bunch more of them. And that comes out to 413.79. And they tell us to round it to the nearest whole number. So that's going to be 414 sheets in the stack. Now, if we needed to do decimal division manually, long division, my divisor goes outside. What I'm dividing into is called the dividend. It goes inside. 
And the first thing you need to do is give it the same number of decimal places. Like we've always said, when you're doing operations manually with decimals, whether you're adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, they need to have a common denominator, and that means the same number of places past the decimal point. Now we're going to move these decimals both to the end, and when I get to my divisor, I'm going to go straight up to my quotient, and I'm going to put that decimal point right here at the end. And then I'm going to divide 145 into 600. That's four times. Doesn't go into six or zero. We've got to go all the way to the third place. And 145 times four is 580. And then you can fill in with zeros to keep everything lined up. Got to borrow. That's going to be a two. Make sure you keep this lined up here. So I've got three places here. So 145 won't go into 2, won't go into 20, but we'll go into 200 one time. So that's 1 times 145 is 145. Give it a 0 on the end. Subtract again, 0, 5. I had to borrow, so that's a 19 minus a 14, which is a 5. Okay, and... 145 goes into 550 three times. Three times 145 is 435. Then I'm going to subtract. I have to borrow, get a 5 there. This becomes a 4 minus 3 is 1. 5 minus 4 is 1. And since 145 won't go into 115, I need one more decimal place because I got around to the whole number. So I'm going to have to add a zero here and a zero here. I do 1150 divided by 145. That goes seven times. Seven times 145 is 1,015. And really, it doesn't matter what I get here because I now have enough information to round this to 414 pieces in the stack. So once again, when you're doing decimal operations manually, make sure that you have the same number of places past the decimal in all numbers before you start to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Example nine. An oscillator is a device that generates an AC signal at some specific frequency. If the oscillator's output frequency is 7,700 cycles per second, how many cycles does it generate in 0.31 seconds? Well, we have to think about this. 0 0.31 seconds is less than one second okay so if this frequency is 77 per second then we're looking for an answer that is less than 7700 right because if that's per second in a half a second it would be half of that amount right 7700 a half of that would be times a half and this, I'm saying, if it was 0.5 seconds, and we can make that a 0.5 to make the multiplication easier. 7,700 times 0.5, look, that's 3,850. So we're still looking for something less than 3,850. Well, look what I did to find that, 3,850. I multiplied. So I need to take my 7,700 times 0 0.31. And I get 2387. So it will be able to generate 2387 or 2387 cycles in a 0 0.31 second interval. Example 10. Fertilizer is used at the tofu soy farms at the rate of 3.5 pounds per acre. How much fertilizer should be spread 
over 760 acres. Well, this is telling us we're going to have to multiply because for every acre, 760, we've got to have 3.5 pounds. Now, we could add 3.5 pounds 760 times, but multiplication is a shorter way to do that. So, 760 times 3.5 it's 2,660 pounds. We'll need 2,660 pounds of fertilizer to spread it on the 760-acre field.